All right, ESPN's Tom Lukabil is with us now. He joins us, ESPN and the ACC Network's Tom Lukabil. You'll see him on the primetime ACC Network game uh, this year. He joins us now on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. What is up, Lukes? How are you? I'm good, guys. Good morning to you. Good to see you. So it'll be Lukabil, Wes Durham, and our girl Taylor Tannenbaum. That is a great crew right there. Great crew. So you're in the booth. Actually, actually, real quickly, that's a change. So Taylor Tannenbaum's moving to host the huddle um throughout the week and dana boyle is going to be our sideline reporter for the prime time crew so my apologies. Little, little correction there yeah, good yeah. job Ryan. that's all right yeah. excellent am, start am, to the interview am i right about I couldn't this leave dana out though i, I know i think she's going to be a my, future superstar tell dana so. my apologies yeah. tell dana my apologies <laughs> am, I, am i right though taylor also will be anchoring that um the game day show so, that's on site yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. so she'll do she'll do that throughout the week friday nights i'll join on friday nights um prime time game i may join during the mornings each and every Saturday. Um, so, yeah, getting ready to get cranked up. I've got NC State next Thursday and uh, Georgia Tech uh, Saturday, so a doubleheader yeah. the opening week. But don't be stunned if you if you show up uh, t- for for makeup or rehearsal and she's got a next-round hat or T-shirt on. She's a big fan of the show, too. So, uh, Well, there we go. Hey, yeah. I'm, listen, I, I, know she, I know she worked in Huntsville. That's right. I, I worked in Huntsville. So, uh, yeah, Taylor and I have gotten to know each other pretty well. So, Luke's, can we start with a guy that never played in the ACC, Steve McNair? New documentary dropping today on Netflix, uh, Untold the Murder of Aaron McNair. Before we talk about the documentary, um, what do you remember about this guy when he was at Alcorn State? Did you know immediately that this would translate to the NFL? No, and I think most people didn't. And I I can remember that vividly because, you know, 94 was my junior year at Georgia Tech. And then going between Georgia Tech to FCS or Division I AA, as they called it then, Eastern Kentucky – and Alcorn State was like rolling. I mean, they were the talk of the college football world at that level because of Steve McNair. But at that time, you know, there there had not been any, you know, super noteworthy success stories really outside of maybe Doug Williams, you know, coming from that level, whether it be the MEAC, whether it be the, the SWAC, what have you. But this guy was just too good to ignore. I mean, you didn't, you know, in those days, you didn't statistically perform like that. I mean, that was extremely rare. We see it all the time now at every level of college football. But yeah, I just remember, I just remember going, "Wow!" You know, when you watched him, there was just there were some there were some jaw dropping moments. And I'll say this, guys, and this helped. The fact that he didn't have to play right away, I think, was really really important for his success his development and the ability to have a long-term future, not, not too dissimilar to Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love and some of these guys that we've seen sit for a little while and then become superstars. Um, I, time's a flat circle for me. <laughs> uh, when LT asked you that question, I thought instantly, I said, my goodness, has Luke and Bill been evaluating players all the way back to Steve <laughs> McNair? And then you let me off the hook when you said you were still a player back then. I was like, God, how dang, old? Dude. I was like, <laughs> I'm not 60. I was like, how old is Luke and Bill? I've been giving you the, res- the respect. You of- like this youthful, that yeah. youthful appearance, yeah. your little, little silver there in the, in the chin? Uh, by the way, ACC Network doing a great job of touring around uh, that big league to all the camps and such. Yeah. Uh, so it's been I'm in good. Louisville today. You're in I Louisville, Louisville today. Uh, down, yeah, I had to, to campus right after and done with you fine fellas. Yeah, and, I, and I'll ask you about Louisville then. I'll come back to the question I'm going to ask later on. But uh, Louisville is a team that benefited, I thought, from an easier schedule last year and took advantage of mm-hmm. it. Schedule's a little bit more difficult, but it seems like the expectations is still there for Jeff Rom to be a contender. Well, they are, and it's because they maybe top to bottom actually have a better roster overall. Now, they're missing some components that they've got to plug and play, uh, particularly in the backfield last year. They were really strong. The whole key, the whole key to Louisville, in my opinion, is can Tyler Shuck stay healthy? And that's a very valid question. He has be- played very well when he's played, but he hasn't been able to get through a season. And I think that's that's the whole key to Louisville's outlook. Defensively, they're going to be really, really good. I think the loss of Colin Lacey is fairly significant just because once he arrived, there was no question that they had made a great choice in the transfer portal and that he was going to kind of be their version of what Jeff Brom had at Purdue and Rondell Moore. And so now they're going to have to find a replacement for him. But this is this is a team that's 
They got everybody's attention. Like you said, Jim, they're not going to sneak up on anybody. They don't necessarily have the benefit of the schedule this year. They're going to get everybody's best. But if the quarterback stays healthy, they could be pretty good. ESPN and ACC Network's Tom Lugabill with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. If I told you, I'm telling you this piece of information. I have, I've been in my DeLorean. I've traveled to the future. I have come back. Where we're going, okay. we don't, where we're going, we do not need roads. Um, I have come back and I have told you Florida State lost a game in September. Who beat them? I'll, I'll remind everyone. Well, I know you know the schedule. I'll remind everyone. They play Saturday against Georgia Tech in Dublin. They come back for a Labor Day night game against BC. After a bye week, they host Memphis. They host Cal. They're at SMU to round out September. So the game they have lost is who? If it's not the opener this coming Saturday, I think the SMU game is really, really intriguing. I also see the Cal game, too. Cal's a lot better than people think they are. Oh, the L- running back is an absolute stud. LT Jay keeps Nott. saying that. Defensive. LT keeps saying that. I keep saying I thought everybody left, but that's two people well, now. Jay Knott's a stud, but Francisco Mendoza, when I watched him play Logan Bill, the guy yeah. could deal it. They got two quarterbacks. They got him and then Chandler Rogers comes over from North, North Texas State. And then um, – defensively almost everybody back they've always been well coached now they're not gonna have the athletes that some of these people are gonna have but they'll jump up and and invite somebody the thing about this game this weekend though and this is why i would probably give i'm giving you a singular answer i would maybe say it's this weekend is there are so many question marks that revolve around the florida state offense that do not revolve around the georgia tech offense georgia tech has far more answers coming into this game Offensively, at quarterback, up front, at wide out, multiple wide outs, at running back. And I think that Florida State's still going to work to find their way. And everybody's going to have their own opinion of DJ Uyangalale, guys. But it's been my belief that how many times does he have to show us what he is until we start believing him? And so the question you have to ask yourself, is he good enough? Is he good enough to make people around him better? Is he good enough to not miss open guys? Is he good enough to push the ball vertically and connect with targets? I think that that's a very debatable question based off of his previous history. Okay, Lugs, I was riding shotgun in his uh, DeLorean. <laughs> so I'm back to tell you what is more shocking, LSU wins the SEC or SMU wins the ACC? SMU wins the ACC. That would be far more shocking. And, and the reason why... They're probably one of the most well-equipped teams to make the jump from the group of five to the power five because their strengths are up front on both sides of the ball, which is generally kind of rare at the group of five level. And at quarterback, they're going to have a great, great supporting cast offensively. They've got a group of wideouts that are really, really good. But what tends to happen, and this happened to TCU, it happened to Utah when they made the jump, is over the course of that long season, you get worn out, your depth gets depleted. Now there's a talent gap between one and two or two and three that is far greater than it is for other Power 5 teams. And if you were to suffer an injury somewhere, you were to get worn out, you were to get tired, the back half of the schedule can become really, really challenging. So I would say that would be a much bigger surprise for me. And I think they're going to be a really good football team. Um, they have me in the car seat in the back of that DeLorean. No, there was only a front seat. There is seat. no back no. seat. You're going to be that's like. That's where the flux capacitor is. That's right. You're going to be like Jennifer and Marty. You're going to be sitting in Lance's lap. Okay. I'm, yeah, in, I'm in Lance's lap. That wouldn't last long, by the way. Lance would throw me out the window. <laughs> but I've come back from the future, and Cade Klubnick is the ACC Player of the Year. What did he improve on to win that? Um, connecting downfield on throws of 20 plus yards or more making the routine plays routinely and a significant uptick in, uptick in speed at the skilled positions on offense. And I'll add another thing. If that were to happen, if that were to happen, Clemson is far and away, in my opinion, the favorite to win the league. Yeah. So because defensively they're loaded. They're loaded on defense. You're loaded. telling me if they get quarterback play better, watch out. Watch out. There's no question. I think TJ Moore and, Bryant Wesco, the two freshman wideouts, are really going to emerge. Tyler Brown emerged last year as a true freshman. They're going to get some guys that were injured that were not available, particularly for the first half of the season last year. And you could see it in the Duke game, the game that I had. And I actually said it on air. I said the scary part is Duke looks faster than Clemson, and I never thought I would say that. So if the quarterback plays well, if Klubnik makes that leap, 
they're going to be a really, really difficult team to handle. You can never discount a quarterback's experience. And Grayson McCall, along with Dylan Gabriel, more experienced than any quarterback right now in college football. Dave Duran's always been knocking on the door 10 wins. Never really gotten over that hump. But if they were to get 10 wins this year, then they become in the conversation college football playoff. How good do you think NC State will be with Grayson McCall coming in? Barring injury, I think they're going to be fantastic. Um, I had to rank my top five order of finish um, last week, and I had Clemson, NC State, Miami, FSU were the, in, in, in the top in that order. Uh, I can't remember who I had at five at that time. But, I, I again, just proved the point. I think defensively they're always a tough out. And then they went and got Jordan Waters at running back. Casey Concepcion could play for anybody in the country. They've got two tight ends. Offensive line is, is I think, one of the strongest Dave Doran's had in a while. And the quarterback brings a, an option element that they haven't had before that's going to be, I think, really difficult for, for people to, to contend with. And it's funny, you bring up Clemson, Jim. You know, Lance, you just brought up NC State. I was asked the question several weeks ago because everybody keeps saying, well, how many you know college football playoff caliber teams are in your conference? I think that's the wrong question to ask. It's how many teams can you get to 10 wins or more? Right. And quite honestly, quite honestly, Florida State, Clemson, NC State, Miami, and the one team that's got the best schedule and most returning production to do it is Virginia Tech. Yep. So now you've got, a, uh, with no divisions, you've got some upper t- crust that, that's pretty good there that you know puts the conference in the mix with with the Big Ten and the SEC, assuming they're all going to have at least three or four, which they likely will. Maybe not the Big Ten, but I think the SEC could. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how the ACC unfolds because there are some definite double-digit win caliber teams in the conference. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think I saw your list, and I think Virginia Tech was the fifth one. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, VT was the fifth one, and the con- their, their, their schedule is beautiful. Yeah. All right, before you go, can you explain to us, as someone who is constantly inside football complexes around coaches of football teams, why Alabama thinks so much of a general manager of a football program that they are willing to give him a $325,000 raise to keep him from leaving? (laughs) Courtney Morgan is staying in Tuscaloosa. He'll be paid almost a million dollars. Why is a general manager now so important to a college football program? Because there has, has become so many moving parts and so many factors and logistics, everything from the internet to graphics to social media to name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal, managing databases. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm partner in, a, in, in the UC report, and we have every, every Power 5 school except for one as a client from a player evaluation standpoint. We have over 45 uh, schools at the group of five level and managing that database day to day and constantly having to know and be organized with your board of where everybody is, where everybody's going, where does everybody stand academically, uh, organizing on campus and off campus visit unofficially, officially. I mean, I could run down a litany of probably a hundred different things that did not exist 10 years ago. And so the organizational structure has become so important so that the coaches can coach and not have to be inundated with all of these things that have nothing to do with preparing your football team on the field. I asked, uh, it was actually Dave Doran. I asked Dave Doran, I said, how much of your actual day now do you spend on X's and O's? And he's like, maybe 35%, wow. 30 to 35. I mean, so you have to have that infrastructure. And it started with Nick Saban. It started with Nick Saban and a guy by the name of Ed Manowitz way back in, in 09, 10, where they started to put together this pro personnel general manager instead of a recruiting department, it was a personnel department and everybody that caught like wildfire lit a fuse. And there are probably 30 different guys that came through that program. Now that are running college football programs from that model. And that's what this thing has turned into. It's crazy. All right. You guys loved it and supported it so well last year. We want to do it again. Every Monday morning, starting Labor Day, this man right here, Tom Lugabill, will join Jim Dunaway. Let's do it. For Monday Morning Live, 7 to 8 a.m. Central. Episode 1 is Labor Day, when we will have a ton of Week 1 to discuss right here on this same platform, Monday Morning Live, just like last year. You're working on Labor Day, man. (laughs) 
<laughs> so first of all, I worked every day, number yeah. one, and I was under the impression we were starting next week. Yeah. So you know what I'm doing? I'm sleeping in an hour. That's right. The heck with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but so, no, guys, I am I'm so fired up. I mean, how many years has it been now that uh, a, a, a group of us, the three of us, two of us, one have been working together, and it has been not only a pleasure but an honor, and we have such a good time and. And uh, I, I can't, I can't wait, man. I'm really looking forward to it. Monday and, morning live, starting Labor Day morning. And of course, yeah. we love entertainment with you. You were dead on on Alien Romulus. I went to see it right. Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I meant to text you back. I did mention you yesterday on the show. I thought it did play, pay homage to uh, both Alien yeah. Aliens perfectly. I thought it was well yeah. done. Didn't it look like it was filmed in the '80s? Like you're watching it, you think you're watching a movie from 1983. But I thought the fact that there's so little CGI. And that so much of the effects and everything are real and, and costumed and animatronics. I thought it was fantastic. Well, and a character that gets brought back, our, our backroom guy, Lunsford, very critical on um, the CGI for that character. I thought it was grainy and done like that on purpose. The character ah. Rook, the synthetic. But yeah, uh, anyway, sure. not to get too deep and nerdy on us here, but I, I thought it was done well. Yeah, I did too. I thought it was really, really good. You guys got anything else on the plate? Uh, shows? Or, the, are you not uh, going to watch the movie? Steve McNair today? Uh, I probably won't have time to watch it today, just because of where I've got to head here for the next several hours. But I, I will be catching up. I just watched something on Lacey Peterson. Remember her? And Scott yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. On Netflix, there's like a, they kind of revisit that, and well, that was kind of creepy to read. I feel like that was like the second OJ trial. Remember that captivated the entire world. And yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely not. Oh, I'll give you a good one real quick. Here's a good one before you got. I, I, I know I'm holding you guys up. No, you're good. Cowboy car, Cowboy Cartel on Apple. It's about how the FBI and the DEA and ATF and all of these people started to realize that the drug cartels, the Zeta cartel in Mexico, was infiltrating our country through horse racing. Oh wow! Yeah, I started and it's it. Awesome. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I, I'm going back. I uh, girlfriend's never seen Tulsa King. So we're almost done with that oh, my second time. But, so you know, good. so season two, I think, drops September 20th. Yep, yep, yep. I can't wait. I can't wait. That'll be my that'll be my plane ride uh, viewing for this Yeah, fall. I'm trying to get these guys on it. Yeah. I, I told him it's Stallone. Oh, it's great. It, Stallone it, is it's best. so good because it, it's something he's never done before, and he's really funny. Yep. That's the thing that's good about it. Yeah. Yeah. You All guys right. got to start listening to us. What's the matter with you? I don't know. We're idiots. I'm a complete idiot. Well, the last time you recommended a cowboy movie to me, those two guys went camping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, do we have time to do it here? I want Luganville to see this. Scott, do we have time? What? We don't. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, that, I'll, I'll, I'll send it show. to you. I'll send it to you. All right. All We've right. got maybe right, the most awkward really. moment in the history of our show. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, oh, is that is that fair, Forster? Is it fair, Rocky? Is it fair? I haven't seen it. Oh, uh, so it might be in the conversation. Yeah, well, it's, the conversation. It's, it's, to me, I wasn't a part of it. Yeah. I, I, no, you weren't. You weren't. I'll send it to you. It's the most awkward thing I I think I've ever seen. Okay, I haven't even seen it, so I'm I'm going to be as surprised as anyone. Uh, I guess I lived it though. Luke's, thank you. I uh, enjoy the uh, trip there in Louisville. We'll see you now on Labor Day. See you on Labor Day. Yeah, Labor Day. Sounds good. All right, buddy. Appreciate it, guys. Take Have care. Good that is ESPN yeah. and the ACC Network's Tom Luganville. Again, Monday morning live starting Labor Day, 7 a.m.